Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Something a little different this time. Well, I have several things in the works already, which you know about. Uh, there is an editing video waiting for me to finish. I do have several chapters left of the Oganza wishes, wishes to finish. And then I can start doing Doorways of Nor, which I am working on. And again, you have to wait for it to come out. And then there's also the last book for the Blood Witch series, which is Blood Witch Legends, and that is more of an urban fantasy. And I have safeguards for all of these things in case, you know, things get a little difficult for me to finish. But something hit me. My mind just was wandering, and I'm going to share it with you. This is a brand new idea in my mind a new trilogy and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get to it but I'm putting the idea locking it down keeping it mine and I have a destination for it if things uh, turn to where I won't be able to complete it so what I'm going to share with you today is a little prologue as you could say for a new idea a new book trilogy this first one is called The Reach. A little different than what I'm usually doing, but I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. As physical fatigue worked its natural course and mental exhaustion once again gripped Seth in the daily cycle that he had become used to, he found his most favored and effective remedy. It wasn't much. There was no newfangled machine or wonder pill that brought him to ease. Even alcohol or a video of some mindless distraction never did as much for him as his soul rejuvenating routine. He found his recliner, dim lights, and a pair of headphones. Music was his drug of choice. His collection had tunes for every mood and occasion. After work, particularly after a very difficult day, his choice was always the same, a collection of smooth rock with a slight techno vibe. With his eyes closed, and after a few bars from the lead song, his mind sailed off to distant lands, colorful countrysides, and exotic people. He always found his comfort this way. Near the fifth song in his collection, and having mentally visited a tall forest with fern and a small crystal stream, he found that state of mind just before sleep removed conscious will. Something was there, something real, and something he had not felt in a very long time. It was profound, and yet so subtle that he found it hard not to try and convince himself that his imagination had already started the night's dreams. Deep breathing, with some concentration, did nothing to shake the feeling that he was left with. As with most of his dreams, what he had seen faded too fast to hold on to. But there was just this feeling, this strange longing for something just out of reach. A moment of desperate grasping to keep hold of what he was struggling so hard for turned into the unexpected. His feelings gained a small bit of clarity, but nothing what he expected and clearly nothing he had ever experienced before. There was someone in those emotions. He realized that he had been touched by a hunger, a type of longing, with deep compassion and kindness. How his subconscious could create something so vivid, so real, and completely out of his ability to imagine caused him to be bound with awe. Then he remembered a fleeting sound of a voice that was soft, melodic, and longing. The voice caused the whole of him to shiver in a type of warmth and euphoria unlike anything he could describe. He remembered what the voice said, but the actual sound left his mind, leaving him painting for remembrance. It was a simple phrase, and yet the most emotional moving that he could just barely endure without weeping. The words were, 
I can feel you too. Her voice was kind, beautiful, and harmony to his total being. But the sound faded, leaving a hole in him that he never knew was there. Someone from his dream or his imagination made space within his consciousness that ached every moment now that it faded. Seth became desperate to hear the voice of the sleeping angel once again. All right, I am going to fill you in on what the idea is behind this. There are times when people are... And you know this, when, when you wake up and you're just desperately grasping onto a dream, it hits you and it fades away and it's frustrating. Sometimes it's an idea, things of an invention, a problem to solve during the day. Uh, could be anything, a beautiful song. Uh, like I had a few nights ago, it, it was a poem about the devastation that anger brings on people. And it faded, and I wasn't able to get it written down. But this one is different. What this story is about, and I won't get into too many details, but it, it's basically the first part is a man in a universe who senses someone in his dreams, and he longs so hard to find her again and study and practice and many different things happen in his life to where eventually a communication starts to set in but this person is not from our universe or his universe book two is from this lady's universe and how she goes through the exact same thing different circumstances different events different universe their worlds both have different difficulties and they try and solve them together in book three. It's a close-knit universe. I can't expand very much on it. But it's a story about reaching through music, the harmony that it makes with the quantum energies of mental thought and subconscious, where these two individuals can transcend dimension and time and affect wonders. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>